COE champion over everything. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of COE Champion Over Everything. Today, I have with me my friend, the author of a phenomenal book and a devotional, Possessing Pure Gold. So I had to bring these with me um, as I introduce Miss Krista Hayes. Krista, what's going on? Hello. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here. Look, hey, I appreciate you coming on. I am excited as well. And uh, look, champions, before we get into Krista's champion story, I'm going to do a brief introduction of Krista, just telling you all a little bit about who she is. All right. So Krista is an emerging voice in the millennial Christian community. Uh, she's found herself in an intersection of deep-rooted religion, new age spirituality, and kingdom authority. Having practiced religion for a number of years with little to show physically for it, like many millennials, she kind of went her own route uh, in order to find uh, her spiritual teachings to guide her throughout life. Um, it wasn't until she stumbled upon her ability to interpret the Bible for herself and others that things really began to turn around for her. Now, Crystal has doubled down on sharing her biblical revelations in a fresh 21st century manner that truly speaks to not only millennials, but also Generation Zers through her teachings and through her books. Um, so once again, Krista, I am excited to have you on board with us. I know, uh, man, we've been working a little bit over a year to try to get this interview out there, right? Yeah, since the book came out last yeah. fall. So I am excited to finally get you on. And, uh, you know, pretty much today, we're going to unpack the title of this episode is going to be The Spirit of a Champion, because we're going to discuss spiritual teaching. So The Spirit of a Champion. So Krista, the podium is yours. Oh my gosh, that is a phenomenal title. Like I got goosebumps just, just listening to the title of the episode. So I'm like, for me, um, it's, it's the same setup, but you know, everyone has the same overarching story that is taking place on earth to where you are looking to find out who you truly are and where you fit in on earth. And so for me, that really was, um, I think I'm really just kind of like starting, starting that journey, actually. I think that, you know, my journey is just now getting to the point to where it's starting to get really good. But for so long, I found myself, you know, just wandering throughout life. Like, you know, I was, you know, very much the do as you are told girl growing up. So I made sure, you know, I was the one that, you know, had A's and B's throughout, you know, school and into high school and college and whatnot. I was the one that didn't get in any trouble. I think I maybe only missed curfew like once in my whole teenage years. Oh, wow. So like I was very much the one that checked all the boxes. And as I got older, I realized that me checking the boxes was still living, leaving me unfulfilled. And I had checked every box that I knew to check. You know, I um, am a good deep Southern girl, Southern Baptist girl growing up, you know, was in church every time the church doors was open, but I wasn't seeing any kind of fruit manifest in my life. Like I had nothing to show for it. I was still uh, spiritually exasperated. I was, you know, in and out of toxic relationships. I was, you know, just trying to, I was just fumbling my way throughout life. And so with that, you know, even as we're studying and we're looking at the cultures and stuff like that and everything that's taking place with the millennials and um, Generation Z, like a lot of them are turning over to different types of spirituality. Um, like going like astrology became really big with the millennial culture again. 
And that was something that I started to look to. I was like, look, obviously reading this Bible is not working for me. Like, let me go and look at a couple other things. So I went and looked at astrology and started looking at chakras and, you know, crystals and stuff like that, just trying to figure out how can I gain the power that I know I'm supposed to have inside. Like God has given every single person on this earth a yearning to harness power and to use it for good in the world. And I couldn't figure out how to get to mine. I knew it was there, but I couldn't figure out how, I couldn't find the path to make it work. And so it wasn't until about um, five years ago that I got the inkling, the you know realization like, hey, you could probably actually be pretty good at writing and interpreting and whatnot. And because of, you know, traumas and stuff that had happened throughout life, like all of that was suppressed. And so it really was this journey that I had to go on, on overcoming and starting, stop looking for, you know, spiritual love in all the wrong places, but really taking the time to harness who I was, to come back to the source and sit down and be like, okay, what I was taught is not working. Let me go to you for myself and figure out how this is supposed to work and how this is supposed to pan out. And it wasn't until I started to do that where I really opened up to God and I stopped battling God all along the way to where it really started to change for me and things really started to, he started to show me what I was looking for. But it wasn't until I started to come to him and realize what he put inside of me and stop um, stop denying it for myself based off of what everyone else was saying that that really started to unfold for my for me. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, you said some things and I started thinking back to my spiritual journey. Um, so just like you, I was in the church and I wasn't really hearing God. And I think for me, it was more the religious uh, side of things, like the practice of just going and worshiping, um, but leaving, sometimes still feeling unfulfilled. Uh, so that journey is something I think a lot of us go through. And I remember as I was working on my master's in religion, um, I had a class called apologetics. And this class was amazing because you got a chance to learn about the different uh, religions that were out there and their beliefs and the structures of those beliefs. And for me, it was an eye opener because I was able to see how, you know, through so many different cultures, there was still like a basis of the Old Testament, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as you went through your spiritual journey, you kind of shared a little bit about, you know, what you had to overcome, but the spiritual journey itself um, the going through the chakras, the crystals and all that, how was that for you in coming back full circle to, you know, to, to God, how was that for you? It was, it was tiring. Is what it, was. it was tiring. And I think that that's what a lot of people are experiencing as well. Like, um, religion is not working in its current in its current setup for people. And that is because the element that is missing is the personal element of actually having that communication with the spirit himself um, on a regular basis. And that is not something that we are taught in our current religion setup. And so with that, we are taught that we are to go to a building, sit under a leadership, and that leadership is to give us the word from the Lord. That was the setup that, um, if you look in the Bible, that was actually the setup that came through Moses with the children of Israel because the children of Israel were too scared to listen to God for themselves. They said, we, like, we're not worthy to be in his sight. So you go to, him, go to God for us and then you come tell us what that is. And now we're getting to a generation that is like, I am strong enough to hear from God myself. I am powerful enough. He gave it to me. I'm the same as you. 
Like I can go to God and I can hear for myself, but we're not taught how to do that in a practical manner that really allows us to access power. And so with that, what we see is that we see a lot of people now venturing off into praying to the universe, um, which is actually the universe actually responds to us instead of us responding to it. That is the way that God set it up. But we see a lot of people now going and praying to the universe. We see a lot of people relying on the planets and the, and the moon and stuff like that. Um, through astrology, which is something I participated in very heavily and whatnot. And I had to like, I had to come out of that. But we see a lot of people now starting to venture off in these other paths because they are providing more of that powerful aspect that we're missing from the church. So with that, it was like, I had to come to an understanding. So where it was like, I had the religion, I had the experience where, you know, with the new age spirituality to where it wasn't quite hitting. Some of it was, some of it wasn't. But then it was like when I came to the revelation of kingdom authority, that is when everything really started to take off because it, I realized, just like you said um, with the class, like every religion has some basis of the new testimony, I mean, of the new testament. And with that, what I actually am writing a book, like it's stored in my files for when I get to it. Uh, Cause I have like several book ideas to write, but I actually, you know, have a, a file tab. Everybody got it right. Because everybody has some aspect of God in their religion that they did get right. And so for, for example, and I know you didn't ask for all of this, but you're gonna have to tell me to stop talking because Look, I like go it. ahead, go <laughs> ahead, share, share and teach. Yeah, but it was like with you know with Christianity, we got it right that the doorway is through Jesus. Um, with Ju with the with Judaism, they got it right that there is only one true God and that He is supreme. The nation of Islam got it right that God is looking for a nation. And so everybody has a piece of the puzzle that we all need to bring together in order to see the entire clear picture of the kingdom of God, which is something that we kind of say, but we really don't understand because we're still looking at it through a religious lens instead of through a kingdom and a nationality and a country lens. Wow, wow, that's powerful. Um, you know, I think about the spiritual journey for an individual. Um, why do you think that's so important? Like just the individual finding their 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 belief system. And I know a lot of times we may be taught a certain way. We may be taught a different uh, religion than others in certain cultures as well. Um, and some people will change between religions. But why is it important to have some form of spiritual belief system? Because you were made for it. Like you are a two-part creature. Every person on this earth is a two-part creature. And you were made physically on the earth. You were made physically to live on the earth, but you were also given a spirit, which its, its home is in heaven. And so you have, like you're comfortable in this environment because you were fun, you're, you grew up functioning in it. But there is this yearning inside that there is another aspect of me. There is another level that I need to reach and get to. And that is the spiritual aspect that God gave us because he created us to be in constant communication with him. Not necessarily constant worship, but in constant communication. And see, and that's one of the things that people get wrong and why so much of the millennial culture and stuff nowadays is turned off by God is because they think that we were created to just sit there and worship God all day long. That's not why God created us. He created angels to worship him all day long. He has that part already taken care of. He created us to have authority. He created us to have dominion over the earth. We have this power that we want to use. And a lot of people now, they think because the message that is coming from some churches is that you were made to worship God 
instead of uh, teaching them how to harness their power and their authority, that is what is turning them and it's, you know, pushing them to this other direction to where they feel like they need to um, fulfill the need for their spiritual life in these other means. All right. So um, as we were created to pretty much subdue, right? Uh, God has always given us a power. And a lot of times we don't realize the power that God has given us. Um, how would you say the sense of community co- plays a part in our spirituality? So community plays a really big part because with that, you can't learn it by yourself. Like you don't have enough time here on earth to be able to get all the information, all of the experience, all of the wisdom that you need in order to learn what God told you to do effectively and quickly enough to where you can become the authority, you can become, you know, the overcomer for your particular area in enough time before you die. So with the sense of community, the community comes in, into play because you need to have those that have gone through the process that can kind of show you, you know, the fast track way to get there instead of you having to go through it all along by yourself. So that is one of the reasons that I have particularly decided to step forward and to come out and to start sharing the revelations that I've had over the past six years is because when I was going through my journey, I couldn't find anybody that was there to kind of teach me and to guide me along this route. It was all kind of a, a, they either weren't sure or it was just kind of left for me to figure it out on my own. And there's like, eventually you'll get there type of thing. And so when you have someone that, you know, can share their revelations. I can I can give you my piece of the puzzle, then I take your piece of the puzzle and then we can grab somebody else's piece of the puzzle. And then we have a bigger, a bigger picture instead of just the little one that I have off of my experiences and um, the viewpoints that I have been given. So community really allows us to come together and use the diverse points of view that we have, uh, whether it be from our backgrounds, our race, ethnicities, you know, jobs, whatever it is. We can take our experiences and our viewpoints, put them together, and then we can get a whole picture. So I think about community and I think about, as you mentioned, um, the structure of the church, right? And you know, I've been reading over the last couple of years how many people are actually leaving the church, how many pastors are leaving the church, or um, you know, unfortunately, they may kill themselves due to the pressure of just the church structure itself. And I think that boils down to the religious aspect versus spirituality. So if you could, can you kind of tell us what's the difference between spirituality and religion? The difference between the two is really identity. Like, and that's what, if you look at, you know, everything that's going on with with our culture, it all boils down to who do you see yourself as? And when you don't have a proper view of yourself, which can only come from the one who created you, then you're going to go into this, well, if I do enough, then I can become enough. And there's never going to be enough that you can ever do to satisfy the becoming if it wasn't something that you were uniquely made and created to do. So with spirituality, what people are looking for when they are going down this road is they're they're attempting to find who they are as a person And they're attempting to find what their ultimate purpose is in life so that they can begin to serve that. But there's only one person who knows what your ultimate purpose is because he was the one that created you to do that. And with religion, like I said earlier, what we're kind of focused on in that community, and I'm a strong proponent of, you know, the church and the community, it just needs to be revamped a little bit. But with that, what we're focused on in the church is the art of worship. Like we have to worship God, we have to be holy and whatnot. 
And that is true. But what the Bible also says is, I think it's first Peter two and nine, that God says that you are a royal priesthood and everyone is concentrated on the priesthood part, but nobody's concentrated on the royal part. Like no one is concentrated on the part that, that if Jesus is the king of kings, then who is the of kings? We are. If he was sent to save us and he is king of kings, lord of lords, then we have to be in the of lords part, in the, in the of kings part. But no one is teaching you how to have that part of that, that part of your identity. And so with that, because people know that they have this innate in power and it's not being drawn out correctly, and they know that they were supposed to rule and do something great on this earth, but they're frustrated because they can't get it out. That is why so many are falling away and they're looking to other means to pull that out of them. So being in community, being uh, being a chosen uh, generation, being a royal priesthood, you know, it, it definitely ties back to that connection. Um, you know, we were created to be connected to God and without that right connection, we're going to drain ourselves out. Right. Mm, um, yes. So with that draining, do you think today's culture, as we currently exist, that we are continuing to lose our spiritual connection or are, would you say that more people are gaining insight into a spiritual connection? It's, um, I would kind of say it's a little bit of both. And so what I am hearing um, as I'm just, you know, having conversations with, you know, others and whatnot, is that I'm hearing that a lot of people are searching desperately to be able to find that connection and to be able to find that, you know, the the true spiritual basis, you know, to feel the, to satiate themselves in a way that only God can do. Um, but with that, they're draining themselves trying to find that because so many have been turned off from God in the first place because it just does seem to be a bunch of rules and regulations that I have to follow to get to this person who you say is nice, but he doesn't really seem very nice because there's so much going on that I don't understand why he doesn't just step in and handle all of this if he's supposed to be all powerful. So you have, you have this culture that is now starting to doubt the power of God because he doesn't seem to be stepping in when in, you know, in Genesis one, it tells us at the very beginning of the book, you can read the first chapter and go home that he gave power over the earth to us. So whatever is happening on the earth, it is our responsibility to step in and fix it. And we can get extra help. We can get extra power, like by taking his spinach. We can get that extra help by calling down help from heaven to do that with. But it starts with us. Like we're the ones who are the ones who are supposed to um, rule and to subdue this earth and to have dominion over it. Like that's our responsibility. He gave that to us. Yes, he did. All right. So um, before we shift gears, because we're going to we're going to unpack a little bit about possessing pure gold, how you got started as a writer, um, but just the spiritual journey, the the spirit of a champion, you know, that's the title of this particular episode. Who would you say exhibits the true spirit of a champion um, in your life? It could be, you know, somebody personally, it could be somebody from the Bible, but who would you say exhibits that true spirit of a champion? Ooh, okay. So who exhibits, who exhibits the true spirit of a champion in my life? All right, so I am, and we'll get to this a little bit in the book. So like my spiritual gift is teaching. So I have the spiritual gift of teaching, which also means that I love to learn. So right now I am under so many mentors <laughs> that I would consider champions. 
Um, the one that definitely sticks out the most to me would definitely be Tony Robbins because I like I have personally experienced him. I have been to several of his events. I just signed up to be in his um, inner circle. I've done his date with Destiny and I've got his books. He definitely embodies the spirit of a champion to me. And so with that, um, he is of the Christian faith as well. And he has taken his spiritual gift of exhortation, which is the ability to move people towards a goal. And he has mastered that. And he has definitely subdued this earth. So I would say that he has definitely fulfilled the command that God gave him in Genesis 1 and 28 to be, fruit, be fruitful, which means to be productive to multiply that productivity, to fill the entire earth with it and to to bring it under his submission. So I definitely think that he embodies the spirit of a champion. So Tony Robbins, y'all go and check out Tony Robbins. Uh, great motivational speaker, uh, great businessman. Uh, Tony, when I first started listening to motivational speakers, he was one of the first people I started listening to Tony, Zig, Ziglar, um, and then Eric Thomas, you know, all have a message. And um, even though they're different, the message is still the same. You know, be fruitful, as you stated, you know, go out there, subdue the earth, take advantage of every opportunity that you have. Um, so taking advantages of opportunities. Now let's talk about Krista, the author you know, how did you know that you wanted to write a book and tell us about that particular journey and how that worked out for you? So I wouldn't say that I just wanted to write a book. It was never something that was in my, it was never something that was on my to-do list. Um, it was something that I just kind of happened. You know what? I take that back. I take that back. It was on my to-do list, but it was one of those secret prayers that you never thought would get answered. Right. So as I'm going back through and I'm thinking, I'm like, that was actually a secret prayer that I didn't think was going to happen. And so about um, 2015, I got the idea. It was just, you know, has all books start it was just an idea I was like oh this will make a really great book and I was like oh you need to go write this down and so the book that I have published today is not actually the first book that I started writing it's it was actually birthed out of the first book that I started writing which was um it was actually about how do you find biblical lessons throughout the Disney princesses, which is actually the first book that I started writing. Oh wow! And once I become big and famous and Disney gives me the go ahead on that, that book would be published too. So um, that was actually the first book. And this book, as I went and I started to um, um, study the scripture, as I started to go through and dive deeper, so Possessing Pure Gold is actually based off of the parable of the talents. In the and as I was going through and I was studying this, it was like one, one idea led to another, that led to another, that led to another. And I'm like, gosh, this part is way too big for this book. It's kind of overtaking it. Like I'm going to have to pull this out and set it to the side. And so with that, I did that. And, you know, started working on, you know, the book about the princesses and whatnot. And was like, as any writer will tell you, anyone who's ever authored and published a book will tell you that writers go through, writers have the worst opinions about themselves in their writing. They're like, this is trash. Nobody's ever going to want to read this. This is stupid. Why did you even come up with this? And I kept going and forth throughout that process, not knowing that basically that was my initiation into being a writer and becoming an author, that this is something that we all struggle with is, is my work good enough for the public? 
And so with that, um, as a part of me overcoming, me overcoming and becoming the champion on the inside with conquering this, it was one, you know what? I don't even care if it's good enough for the public. I'm going to publish it just to show that I can. And when I got to that point to where it's like, I'm going to publish this to show that I can sit down and write a complete book and put it out into the world and have it visible that my thoughts became words that became pages. To be able to do that was something that, you know, like I said, it was a secret prayer that I never thought would happen that ended up becoming an actual reality. Awesome. So as I read through the book, as I experienced the book, as I experienced the devotion, um, it the layout was so unique to me. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Smart Goals. Um, but you know, you have the application side, you have your time to reflect, you have your spiritual teachings, um, you have the time to express yourself through creativity. So as you went through that creative process of not only writing and developing the content, pulling out the scriptures, how did you choose the layout for your book? Well, with that, that came along because I am, I am not one to just sit around and be like, oh my God, that was good. And, you know, just throw it to the side. I'm like, if you're going to take the time to read this, if you're going to take the time to like spend your money, spend your time investing into this material, let's let it make something in your life as well. And so with coming up with the layout for the devotion, it was like, okay, we're going to take these scriptures and we're going to actually apply them. We're going to like set this up because the way that the, the way that the book and the devotion is set up, it is set up to help those who don't know what their spiritual gift is, that is just kind of out there like floundering in the world, trying to figure out, am I good at this? Am I good at that? And they are like I was back in 2007, like you're doing a job that you're good at, but you hate it. And so when you're stuck in a position that you're good at, but you hate because you know that it was not what you were created to do, this book was set up to get those people from the place of not knowing what their gift is to figuring it out and then taking steps to implement it wherever they are. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So um, I'm going to ask you a question. You are working on something right now. Can you speak to that or no? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And so, yeah, I am one. I'm like, I have, I have a bunch of irons in the fire. There's always something cooking over here. So, but I am actually um, sitting down to publish my second book, um, I haven't finalized on the title yet. I'm kind of leaning towards the first command, the first commandment, um, because I truly believe that before the Ten Commandments, before the Mosaic Laws, before the entire rest of the Bible was written, that first, that Genesis um, 1 and 28 was the first commandment that God ever gave man. So in his very first words to him, he gave him instructions on how he was to live his life. And I think so we spend so much time not fulfilling that commandment. And it's a part of the reason why we are so unfulfilled is because we're not being fruitful. We're not multiplying. We're not filling the earth and we're not doing it. And that is because, first of all, so many people think that that only applies to babies and it doesn't, <laughs> like it just doesn't. I like, I personally am of the belief that every command that God gives us, that it does have a physical nature and a spiritual one as well. So while it may have been for those two people to go forward and fill the earth with the rest of the people, but it also meant that for you to take what's spiritually inside of you and for you to reproduce that in the world as well. So my second book is going to be walking through the process of really gaining that identity of who you are in God 
what you were meant to do on the earth by breaking down um, Genesis 1 26 through 1 29. So that whole scripture of figuring out what does it mean to be blessed? Like no one can really say, oh, people say all the time, I'm blessed and highly favored. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be blessed by God? What does it mean to be made in his image? How can, how are you, you know, how can you be productive? How can you be fruitful? How do you multiply? How do you subdue the earth? Like that's, it's a really big place. How do you subdue it? And so taking um, those scriptures, breaking it down with other biblical, you know, evidence as backup in it to really show that this is how you can sit down and you can go forward and, you know, really create the life that you want, that you know that you were designed to live. And so that's what this second book is all about. So as you were discussing the book, um, it came to me there's a parallel between your first book and your second book. Um, and that's the fruitful nature of man or woman, right? Um, and how God has given us um, so many possessions, so many things, so many talents, so many skills that we are to use those skills, those talents, those treasures, whatever it may be, and continue to help spread the word um, continue to bring people towards him and ultimately just, you know, be good stewards of what he's provided to us. And I think, you know, you mentioned the first book, Possessing Pure Gold, dealt with the parable of, you know, the, the king or the ruler that went away and he gave the different talents to the different people. And one person was technically, he said he was scared. Um, and he knew that the ruler was a harsh man and, and, you know, the ruler was like, well, if you knew I was harsh, you could at least put my money in the bank and gave me some interest back. Right. So unpacking that particular parable, I mean, it's so many different lessons that we can take, but how do you think that people can have the true spirit of a champion and get beyond that fear factor? Because I think a lot of us have those treasures and we know we kind of have an idea of what we're called to do, but it's that fear factor that is within us that's preventing us from doing it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say, like, first of all, like, one, like, quick answer. One, it is knowing who you are. And two, it is knowing all the facts. And with that, in the story of the parable of the talents, the, the servant who had the one talent didn't have either. Because with that, and that was one of the things that drew me to the story in the first place, because I was, like I said, in the beginning, I was like, I was kind of averse to God and whatnot. And I could not understand why in this entire Bible, it says over and over, God is good. God is great. God is awesome. You know, God loves you forevermore. But Jesus himself said, this is what the kingdom of God is like when describing this parable. Like, this is what God is like in the kingdom. And I'm like, obviously God is like the owner in this story he is the master in this story and i was like the master is mean to this to this servant to his slave so i was like how can god be oh so nice but jesus is given an example of him being rude so i just didn't understand it and so it took me i was so irritated with it like it took me down this long path i was like okay krista there's got to be more to the story than what's presented here. And so as I go through and I look and I read and I study and I research the scriptures, because you have to do that to be able to get an understanding from something that was written 2000 years ago. Like what's on the surface is not just what's on the surface. Like you have to go deep, deep, deep into it. And so as I went deep into it, it was like, not only did this particular, you know, servant give his people free access to wealth, 
like back in their days, um, a talent was a unit of measurement. It was how they measured their wheat, their barley, their silver, their gold, they measured it in talents. And talents weighed as much as a person did. Like that was their measurement. Like as much as a person weighs, this is how much a talent weighs so that they could easily do deals back and forth between people without, you know, a physical money system like we have today. So with that, it was like this servant, the, the master gave the servant a talent of gold. And I was like, all right, so if he gave him as much gold as a person weighs, I was like, the average person, let's say 150 pounds, like how, how much? I was like, that's a lot of gold. I was like, today you can sell an ounce of gold was like trading for like 1800 bucks on the stock market. So I was like, let's throw that into 2021 and put that on the stock market. How much is that gold? And it came out to be like almost three and a half million dollars. I was like, you know what? I'm sorry, God, because if I gave somebody three and a half million dollars and they decided to sit on it, I would be a little peeved at them too. So when I got to that understanding to where it wasn't just like, I'm giving you a little bit and you do nothing with it and I'm going to punish you for it. He was like, I've given you all that I have. Like I gave just that one servant, you know, three and a half million dollars. I gave another one seven. I gave another one almost $15 million. And I left. I was like, whatever y'all do, I'm cool with it. I was like, you really got to trust your people to be able to give them that type of wealth and walk off and trust that they're going to make good decisions with it. And so with that, the servant in the story did not know who he was because he didn't see in himself what the, what the master saw in him. The master says, you have the ability to be able to take this amount and flip it and make more off of it. But the servant didn't think that he could. So while he gave him what he could handle, the servant didn't think that he was worthy enough to be able to handle it. And that so resonated with me because I was like, at that point where I was in my journey, um, on my way to becoming a champion, I was like, God, I will take what you gave it and save it and give it back to you. Make sure I don't lose nothing along the way so that you're not out of anything on my, on my behalf. Because growing up, I was taught to not be a burden to other people. So then so many times what you're taught, you know, throughout family and throughout relationships with friends and whatnot, just co going throughout the world, whatever you were taught in your, in those arenas, you automatically attribute to it in your spiritual life. So I brought that over into my spiritual life that I didn't want to be a burden on God. So let me not do anything that he'll have to be out of because I was a bad manager of it. And so with that, not knowing your identity and then not knowing all the facts with the fact that the master knew he had the ability to do it, that he had free reign and the master wouldn't have said if he had lost it because at least he took a chance to bet on himself. And so, so many times we don't want to step out because we're so, we're so afraid of messing up and, uh, um, and not at least breaking even that we decide that we would just rather sit on it and not do anything at all. And that's so powerful. You know, I think about my journey, my financial journey. Um, there have been times where a guy said, all right, Rich, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to see what you're going to do with it. And I've fallen short. But even in falling short, I at least made the first step to try something different outside of my lane. Um, mm -hmm. but I learned valuable lessons from it. And I think, you know, this particular lesson about the talents is so powerful because as you mentioned, you know, the master sees a lot in us, a lot more in us than we often see in ourselves. And sometimes we yeah. do need the community of others to kind of speak life into us, to, to help us when we have that self doubt so that we are good steward over everything that God has given to us. Um, so with that being said, we're actually coming to the end of this particular episode, Krista. Yeah. 
So this, um, we we're gonna we're gonna get you back for a part two, and on that part two, we're gonna bring you in to discuss. What are we gonna discuss on part two? So on part two, we're gonna discuss my personal life and where the folly shorts and the champion <laughs> story was in there, which is actually turned out to be a beautiful symphony on the other yeah. side. And it's not even done, finished being written. And I love, I love a piece of your personal story because your baby girl and I share a birthday. That's, that's, that's my homie. <laughs> So, yeah. so uh, call to action as we get ready to conclude the show. What is one key takeaway that you want to share with our listeners and our viewers about what it is that you do and also what it is that they could do um, in operating in the spirit of a champion? So um, with one thing that I do, like... It was, it was told to me at the beginning of this journey for me personally, that I was a record setter. So with that, um, whether they meant that I would be setting records or I would be setting records straight, I would definitely go with both. And what I would want people to do is I would want them to go back and the ball again, but not to take a look at it through the, the lens that they were always taught, but to take a look at it through a fresh lens of just what is the Bible saying? Like the Bible was never about building a religion. It was always about building a nation, building a kingdom of those who thought differently, of those who acted differently, and those who were able to be able to use the power that God gave them on the earth. And it is filled to the brim with examples of how you can do that. And so my call to action is for them to just pull out their Bible one more time and look at it, not from a, this is a God I am sent to worship, that I was just created just to worship him, but how can I take the power that he has given me and turn around and turn it into more? Awesome, awesome. So last thing, Krista has been doing some amazing things on social media lately. Um, so we want you all to be a part of her teaching, her spiritual journey, and um, just helping others to find their own way. So Krista, how can people, for one, get in contact with you, but also how can they be a part of that journey? So you can find me on um, on Facebook, on IG, TikTok, and Clubhouse, all under the handle of Krista K. Hayes. So that's K-R-I-S-T-A-K-H-A-Y-E-S. So it's the same handle on those four platforms. I can't be in all places at once. I'm trying my best, but... It's, it's exhausting. Social media is exhausting. <laughs> and then also I have a little, a little burgeoning YouTube channel um, that I am starting as well. So that's at Krista Hayes as well on YouTube. And if they would like to receive behind the scenes, um, you know, updates and want to know these little tidbits before they become public, they can also text the word kingdom so K-I-N-G-D-O-M to 844-474-0414. It's a lot of fours in there. It is indeed. Crystal, my friend, once again, I thank you for coming on the podcast. Um, it's been amazing. I can't wait until our next time that we're able to connect. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for what God is doing in your life, the life of your family. Um, as always, we want to keep moving forward and we want to be, be champions over everything. So as we exit COE, thank y'all for tuning in. Champion over everything. Bye.